Hi, my name is Andrew. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the power of belief, particularly in mental health. So I was going through some forums today and uh, someone just mo mentioned something about how they had seen a lot of posts recently, or just in general, not necessarily on that forum, about people who have said that they've uh, overcome bipolar. And a lot of people were uh, in the comment section found that quite to be, uh, to be quite offensive. <laughs> it was possible. Now I don't know about all the other people, but I do know about myself. And I can certainly say that I've absolutely overcome that. And so coming back to the idea of this, uh, the power of belief that we, I know from when I was going to like various psychiatrists and psychologists and all the stuff, doing all the drugs, all that, I believed in them. I absolutely did. I believed they had the answers. They, they, their method was the way. And really based on what? It's just, we have such a belief system in many, many ways in our lives, just you know, oh, that's the expert, we'll go to them. They're the specialists, go to them. And look, sometimes that works out for people. But if you actually stop to have a look a lot of the time, there's not always a, a great success rate for a lot of things in uh, many areas. And I mean, even look at the idea of bipolar. I mean, a lot of people were saying in the comments that, uh, or in the, you know, yeah, in the, in the comments of, the, of that particular forum, that they've been told time and time, it's incurable, all of this stuff, right? But that's only because the uh, you know, medical field don't really understand a lot of things. And I'm not just talking about in context to mental health. That's also physical health. You ask them a lot of the time, how did I get this or whatever? You know, um, you know, how did, yeah, how did this arise or where did it come from? And uh, a lot of the time they don't really know. They've got some opinions, some ideas about things. But I know a lot of the time they don't, they don't know because I speak to a lot of people and they, they tell me things. And I say, well, what did the doctor say? <laughs> and I'll say they didn't really know. Um, so anyway, the reason I bring that up is that we put so much power into these people who, who aren't really demonstrating a lot of the time results, you know. I mean, you see it so many times, people going to whatever therapist, particularly in the context of this video, and they're just not getting results. And they'll go time and time again to the same person, you know, and you're not, they're not getting, you're, if you're the person who like you can relate to this, the patient or whatever, client or whatever, You'll know within yourself, and I know from talking to a lot of people and myself, I wasn't getting better. And yet, it's seldom have I heard anyone say, <laughs> a therapist of any kind say, I think you should see somebody else, or I'm not helping you. People go for years and years. I did. I was going for 10 years. And, you know, it was nice and it made me, you know, feel good and I felt comfortable. And that's, there's something in that for sure. But that's not, that's not getting better. And it's the same with um, this power of belief in, you know, the tablets are working. Well, what do the tablets actually do? I mean, if you actually have a look into actually how these things work, I mean, number one, if they're honest with you, they don't really know 100% how a lot of these things work, and that's why some uh, work better than others for certain people. There is some, some understanding, of course, but not entirely, and I know that because psychiatrists have come out and told me we don't really understand a lot of these things, how they work exactly. They've got, you know, they're basically playing with your chemistry, you know, turning things off and on and off to so things don't communicate in the body, in the brain, all that sort of stuff. So uh, then you... You go, oh, great, there's no symptoms. <laughs> but that, the, the cause is still there. What, what's, what's causing the problem to begin with? How many of you have maybe experienced this that you've never even got close to them saying what's, you know, what the cause is? And of course, some of it's pretty straightforward, of course. Uh, you know, um, traumas and unresolved issues. Without, that is a, a very big aspect, without a doubt. That's probably, what the, probably the number one thing in a sense. But we also need to look at all other aspects of our lives too, it is a holistic approach to getting better. And I can't think of one therapist that's looked at all, all these things. They might have an understanding and perhaps mentioned a few things, but uh, overall, no. It, a lot of, particularly psychiatry, they're, they're very big on the drugs, pushing those things. And I mean, is that, is that health? <laughs> you know, rattling a, a little bottle of pills, or, you know, a, I mean, is that health? <laughs> it's not health. Health doesn't come in a, in a, in a box like that. Um, it's something that we need to make and concerted sort of effort in with ourselves. I, I'm not saying don't go to these people, uh, and I have shared this my opinion on this anyway, personal opinion. Uh, I'm not really a, a fan of the drugs in any in any capacity. I know that some can be life saving in, in health things, um, but again, there's always a there's always a, a cause. I mean, I think there's very few, probably percentage wise, uh, where things are really really needed in that regard. Um, again, that's another topic, but that's my opinion. I, I don't think they're necessary. Okay, I think there's other things that need to be done. I mean, even on the forum, I, I mentioned, people were mentioning about the sort of food they eat, just jokingly, but um, 
you know, I mean, a lot of them were talking about junk food and things that they eat, KFC and all these things. People have no idea how much that affects your chemistry on so many levels, okay? Junk food doesn't have to be KFC, it can be a lot of things. You know, we, when we start messing with our gut mi microbiome, we are messing with our chemistry on all different levels. Um, there's a different reasons why, our, our, you know, in bipolar context, why the moods go up and down for sure. It, there is an imbalance, but our lifestyles are a total imbalance. A lot of it is lifestyle related, not entirely. I was, I'm not going to take away from the traumatic uh, unresolved issue aspect. There's things that need to be done there. But other things we can take charge of, you know, lifestyle related. And people go to these therapists because they're saying, well, I need help. I don't know where to go. I'm overwhelmed. Where's, where's the path? And they'll take you down a path, <laughs> you know, the garden path, to a lot of the time nowhere, okay? And, okay, some people might be offended at me saying this. Like, that's fine. I don't mind. I've been down this path. I'm speaking from experience. So I don't, I don't really care. And it's not just personal experience. As I said, I speak to so many people about this stuff. And it's, it, they can relate, okay? So there might be very few out there who are getting the, uh, what they need out of it. And that's great. I, honestly, I'm really happy. If that's working for you, fantastic. I really am happy about that. Uh, the other thing about the drugs too is I'm not a fan of is the, what you're putting in your body. You, you think that stuff's just flushing out of your system when you go to the toilet? It's not. It's in your body, okay? That's why things are changing in you because it's still in there. And that's why you, every time you have some more, it goes in. It doesn't just magically all go away either. It's in there, okay? That's another thing about cleansing out the system. Uh, you, you know, it's not healthy, this stuff in our bodies. It shouldn't be there, you know? We don't need these things. I mean, you can see we're, our society anyway that if you, if you look at how many illnesses, not just mental, but have you know, just exploded over the years and more and more all the time, out of nowhere, if you go back in history, not that long ago, even 100 years ago, and, and look at the, how much cancer was around and things like that, compared to now, it's absolutely skyrocketed. What's the difference? What has changed? Okay, it's, it's our sick society. We have, our food is just, it's unhealthy, the environmental things, there's a, there's a lot of things, okay? I'm not going to look at all of them, but I think you, um, you'll know some of the basic ones already. <laughs> Sorry, there's an ant on me then. <laughs> they're, they're bitey ones though. Um, so things have been getting worse. I think most people, if you look, well, look back a little bit, you, you'll see that, but even people who've got the experience, um, of having quite a few years under the belt, they'll, they'll know, they'll see how things have progressively become worse. I mean, even weight. I remember when I was at school, someone was overweight, you know, maybe one kid in your class, a lot of the time it was one kid in the school, now it's a complete reversal, you know. And those things are impacting us, there's so many things that are impacting us, so we need to take charge of our own lives. You know, I'll say, you, use therapists, use whoever to help you guide and give you some ideas, but don't, don't just trust them blindly. You know, the power of belief is really just believing these people have all the answers. They have a answer. It's one method. It's not the only way. You know, you, you find it with people who have treated themselves with cancer and all sorts of things. And it's only our belief that, oh, uh, it can't be done because this doctor told me so, which is what I was getting at with this forum. People just, nope, it's impossible, can't be done, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe anyone else has told me that they've got over it. Same, the same thing happens with other illnesses and disease in the body. No, no, it's impossible, we can't turn around. Same thing happens with like, like diabetes is a big one. Uh, and there's so many people who have turned that around and uh, we understand how that works. Um, I'll do some videos on that too, it's rather interesting. Um, so I've looked into that as well. So don't let your own paradigm, you know, this, this, this belief system that you've been given, um, limit you, you know? You do have a lot of power in your own life to, to take charge of it. it. Look, it's not an easy, an easy road to, to getting better. Um, you know, it's often referred to things like this as the, as the hero's, hero's journey, the hero's quest, because it does take a lot of courage to face these things, to take them on board. It's not easy, it's not easy, but you can do it. I've done it, okay? And apparently other people have done it too. I haven't even looked it up. I, you know, I, I just went my own way, you know, when I worked it out and worked towards it. And it wasn't overnight, I cultivated it. And that's it, we've got to cultivate a healthier lifestyle. And really what you want to become is a higher, different version of yourself, okay? Um, and, um, and this new version of yourself does make different lifestyle choices, okay? And they take an interest in their own, their own, you know, getting better. And I'm, I'm not saying that other people out there aren't doing that. But again, a lot of the time when we're looking for how to get better, we're still doing it in the context of this paradigm of, oh no, you can only do this and that to get better or do this and that, um, you know, to have some improvement. But that's, again, we've got to, we've got to, 
stretch our minds, you know, be open-minded at the very least, try some things. Um, I mean, food is such a big one, you know, exercise, but the choices you make too, I mean, people don't realize the sort of effect that uh, a lot of the content that they listen to has, has on them, you know, and I, I, as, I, as I've said in another video, that thinking back to what I was like, I do remember having the negative thoughts, uh, what they all were, I'd have to really think back to what they sort of things were, but I, um, sorry, I just got a <laughs> notification that distracted my, my attention there. Uh, I'd have to really think back to my to my to my thoughts. You know what I was thinking. I know there was negative ones. There was a lot of things there was self-esteem, of course, and all of that stuff cycles around and around in your in your mind, and and that's no good. I, I really have to get into explaining that how the how the mind works and what you can do to help yourself with that, um, because a lot of people aren't even really aware of what how the mind is actually working you know, within themselves, and it's and I've just I know I just, uh, described it roughly in a video, but. You know, if you're all your mind's going around in like in a teacup sort of thing, you get a teaspoon and start spinning around a certain way, uh, and, and you know, you, the more you spin a teaspoon in a cup a certain way, you know, the more it gets momentum and things like that. And that's what a lot of people have got going on with uh, negative thinking, okay, and, and, and feelings and emotions, all these things, and I mean, they're all related. But then when you want to go back the other way, well, it doesn't just automatically just change direction. There's a, there's a, there's a, it slows down and then it's a bit of a mess <laughs> when it comes together and then it takes a new, new direction. But we have to be very vigilant about our minds. Oh, if there's anything you need to do in your life, that is guard your mind from all negativity. Look, there's a place when you start getting better where you can uh, start introducing things again, you know, into your life if you want to. But this newer version of yourself is probably not going to want to do that anyway. Because <laughs> uh, you'll see the damage a lot of things that you're probably doing now are actually impacting your mind. But it is possible, you know, that you can go back to those things uh, if, if, you, if you wanted to. But sometimes we've got to take a little bit of time out. We've got to just reset the clock within ourselves and, and find a, a newer version of ourselves, a better version of ourselves. And I, I know these videos, I'm, I'm not getting a lot of depth because I, I would like to uh, plan them out a lot, lot better to help you perhaps uh, start looking at some areas of your life. And I know some of you may, may think that what I'm going to tell you in some of these other videos is probably not going to make any difference. And look, I can tell you from experience and not just my own personal experience that it might seem that way. But as I said, we're cultivating a we're cultivating a new version of our life, a better one that's going to be supportive of good mental health. And I've said before, food is a very big one. You know, the media content, the people around, sort of dramas that we deal with people. Sometimes we've got to remove ourselves from situations where um, uh, there's, oh, gosh, there's so many things. I, I, yeah, I really need to really just map it all out for everybody. Um, and I mean, that's why I wrote that book originally. And, uh, uh, you know, for people to look at where how I initially got through it. but. Then I've gone further than that, and there's even more stuff to do, you know, which I've gone even deeper again. And uh, you know, I really want to share that with everybody, you know, because it's. Um, I really want to see 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 people get over this suffering. I, it's not necessary. It's not necessary that we suffer. We shouldn't be suffering in lives, you know. And and I know people are desperate. I know they are. I was desperate. I was suicidal a lot of times. Gee whiz, you know. <laughs> it's, it's so hard to, as I've said before, it's so hard to imagine that I was that person. You know, I, I was showing some photos of someone I only just met um, uh, recently. I've only known her a few weeks now, and showing her some photos of me back, you know, when I when I first started putting on weight. Uh, with all, of, I still had mental health issues then, but when I got into to the meds, <laughs> started putting on the weight. She looked at all the different photos I showed of the progression. And she said, "That guy doesn't even exist anymore." And I said, "I know. I tell people that all the time." She said, "You can see it, like in the eyes and everything. It's not just <laughs> not just the weight loss. That's definitely very apparent." Um, but she said, just look in the eyes, it's so different. You're such a different person, like not even that guy anymore. So I know, I keep telling people, this is what you've got to do. Become this different version of yourself and you work towards it, you cultivate that. You know, and, I, and I'll go into all the little things that I have done uh, and you can work out the ones that work for you. And I said, some of the things I'll suggest, might, you might say uh, or think that, oh, this is, this is um, pointless, but I'll explain to you the reason why. I mean, a part of it's, um, a lot of it's habitual. We've got uh, habitual thinking, of course, um, but also actions. So in our, in our brain, we, we will create these, these pathways and we're just, we're just playing the same thing over and over again, okay? Over and over again, doing the same action. So you just start doing simple things like, okay, I'm not gonna park, when, I, when you go to the supermarket, instead of parking the car, we always park it, you park it somewhere completely different, maybe not even on the car park lot at all. Um, and you know, maybe you go to a different supermarket or you, instead of buying 
you know, this type of food, you buy this type of food, whatever it is. But all the choices you start to make that are totally counter to what you used to do, you actually start to help break down and almost, um, it's almost over time you, you start, um, well, you're letting go of the, I guess, the, the patterns, I suppose, because the more you keep repeating something, the more you're sort of etching it more into your, into your pathways. But the more you start to go and counter to that and start doing all these different things, you're having new experiences and then the brain sort of, oh, hang on, this is different. And you're going out of the mold a bit. But the more you do it, the more you do it, the more you start throwing curveballs to your, to your own brain, um, that really helps a lot with, with starting to make this transition to a, uh, to a, do, to a new, new mindset. We'll call it a new mindset. Um, but I'm not saying that just doing these few things in themselves uh, are going to solve all your problems. Of course they're not. Um, there is deeper work that needs to be done. Uh, it's very interesting the amount of damage that comes from childhood and uh, most people aren't even really aware of. I mean, some people absolutely are aware of. But it's, it's um, I mean, it doesn't just happen during childhood. That is a very formative time. And then we get all these beliefs about ourselves. And I've said before, it doesn't matter if you had the best parents in the world. You may have, as a kid, uh, particularly between the age of zero and seven, was a very formative time because of the way the brain, the brain frequency is, that you may have misunderstood something. And then from that, even if someone said just something jokingly, you didn't have the analytical ability as a child to, to make sense of what was happening. So then you just made all these beliefs around it about yourself. And it could be heaps. And then you got all these emotions attached to it. And they're very, very powerful. Uh, and all this stuff's locked in, right? So we've got to get out of that stuff. It's amazing. I know I talk to people, work with people uh, about, about working through this stuff. And I'll tell you, I'm a big one for like finding patterns in people's lives because it's so interesting. It's so easy after a little while just to, just to be able to find the patterns and people make these realizations of, wow, you know, far out and then they can trace it back to this thing and, and then it's like, all right, we've got to deal with that now. We've got to get that out. You know, we've got to sort that out. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave this video here, but uh, yeah, originally this whole video was about, uh, you know, just not getting, allowing ourselves to be, to be locked down in a power, a power of belief, not so much about getting better because that is important, you know, believing you can get better. Absolutely good to be on that side of it, but, but not being on the other side of it, being in the, the belief system that you can't get better. That, that's another belief system. And you don't want that one, all right? Because I've done it. I'm living proof. You can turn it around. And apparently other people have too. I, I haven't looked them up. I know you think I would have, but I, I just didn't even really occur to me. I just thought, I'm going, going ahead, doing my own thing, work it out myself, and just went with that. Um, so I, have to look, I will have to do some research on it and find out who else is perhaps um, what they've done, what they had. Um, but uh, yeah, the other thing I noticed in the forums too were people doubting people had any problems to begin with. And I can understand why people might feel that way, um, based on, again, their belief system that it's being challenged, particularly when you're feeling pretty low in mood, thinking, oh, I don't believe this, you know, that's fair enough. Um, but uh, anyway, as I said, I'm going to leave this here. I hope you have a wonderful day, and uh, please leave any comments uh, below.